Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about why the subset relation is a partial order. Now this is a bit of a mouthful and there's some terminology involved so let's start at the beginning. What you should know already is what a Cartesian product is. It looks like A cross B. It's essentially the set of ordered pairs where the first element is in A and the second element is in B. And that's pretty much all you need to know as a prerequisite. Um, beyond that, I'll be giving you some definitions. So first of all, a, a binary relation on a set A and set B is a subset of A cross B. And if AB is an element of the binary relation, then we write A tilde B. And notice that this is an ordered relation. We can't just say B tilde A at the same time unless there is the property of symmetry. Now we can finally get into what a partial order is. A partial order on a set S is a binary relation on S cross S such that there are three properties that have to hold and I'll list them for you now. One, we have to have reflexivity, meaning x tilde x for all x in S. Two, we have to have anti-symmetry, so if x tilde y and y tilde x then x and y are the same element of s and this is for all x and y and s and finally we have to have transitivity so if x tilde y and y tilde z then x tilde z for all x, y, z, and s. So that's what a partial order is. These properties might feel familiar to you because for example a less than or equal to b for a, b real numbers is a partial order. In fact, it's a total order, which implies that it is a partial order. Um, but this abstractifies the concept. What we are trying to prove here, what well, that is the goal of the video, is to show that if we are working in a universal set, That means that all of all the sets that we're working with are subsets of this universal set U. Then the subset relation, like A subset B, is a partial order. This might seem a bit abstract or abstruse, but it's actually a very powerful 
idea and um, I'll mention why after we've proven the fact that it is a partial order. Let's prove this. Um, but just just so you know the formal definition, A being a subset of B means for all X or for all sets X in the universal set X being in A implies X is an element of B as well. And we're going to be repeatedly using this definition. So let's prove that the subset relation is a partial order. We want to prove first of all reflexivity and we want to show that for all X X is in A implies X is in A because that would mean A is a subset of A and this is definitely true because something a proposition must imply itself it's a tautology. Secondly, we want to prove anti-symmetry. This means we're going to suppose A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A. So that means we're assuming for all X X is an element of A implies X is an element of B and we're assuming also that for all X if X is an element of B then X is an element of A so really it looks like this we've got A inside B and we have B inside A so it it should intuitively make sense that A and B are the same set and indeed this is true because these two facts together tell us that for all x, x is in A if and only if x is in B, which means A equals to B as desired. And finally we're going to prove transitivity. we are assuming that A is a subset of B and B is a subset of C so that means that for all X if X is an A then X is in B and for all X if X is in B then X is in C. Now we're going to use transitivity of implication. What this tells us is that for all X, if X is in A, then X is in C. And that means a is a subset of C as desired. Okay, so that proves that the subset relation is in fact a partial order. And now I just want to tell you that anti-symmetry is a powerful technique. Um, anti-symmetry is a powerful technique because for example if we know that A subset B and B is a subset of A then together they tell us that A equals to B so two weaker ideas 
give us a strong idea. This is important and it comes up over and over again. For example, if A is less than or equal to B and B is less than or equal to A, then A equals to B. And we'll, we need this in analysis all the time. In fact, it's said that to an analyst, an equality is just two inequalities in disguise. So that's one example. Another example is what we just proved that if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A, then A is equal to B. And we need this for locus results in geometry, for example. And a third example is divisibility. So if A divides B, and B divides A and they're positive integers, then that implies A equals to B and we need this often in number theory. Okay, so uh, that brings us to the end of our talk. I'll give you a quick recap of what we proved. First, we discussed what a Cartesian product is. Then we defined a binary relation. We talked about tilde notation. Then we defined a partial order, which is a binary relation on S cross X that's reflexive, anti-symmetric, and transitive. Then we proved that the subset relation is reflexive, anti-symmetric, and transitive. And finally, I mentioned examples of anti-symmetry, which include uh, inequalities, the subset relation, and d divisibility to uh, encapsulate why this is such a powerful technique. Okay. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.